The running Utes are 14 and seven, having a lot of success this season. But what's led to this success and the development of some of their key players? A former Utah coach joins us to talk about it on today's Locked On Utes. You are Locked On Utes, your daily podcast on the Utah Utes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, everyone, and thank you for making Lockdown Utes your first listen every single day. We are available on all platforms, including YouTube. My name is JT Wizard, so a former intern inside the University of Utah Athletic Department. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. On today's show, we're talking all things Utah basketball. It's been a great season so far for the Utes. A lot of promising wins and still a lot more left to accomplish, but the potential for this team is extremely high. So in order to talk about just the development of this team and what they've done, we're having a former Utah coach in Joe Cravens join us. He has over 20 years of college coaching experience. He was with the Utes from 1989 to 1993. Coaching under coaches like Archibald, Rick Majerus, of course, too. Was also the interim coach in 89 to 90. Called numerous games, too. And if you guys haven't had a chance to listen to some of his calls yet, then you guys are definitely missing out. One of the best analysts in the college basketball game in Joe Cravens joining us now. Coach, really appreciate you coming on. Yeah, JT, my pleasure. Thanks. Uh, it's a real honor to be on with you. Yeah, I appreciate it. We've, we've gotten to talk on a couple of occasions over the past couple of years, so I was looking forward to getting you on for this one. And Coach, just starting out with, this team in general, I know you got your first look at them in the Westminster exhibition game. And what did you notice that was different about this team? Cause I think for me, it just seemed from a distance, it seems like the chemistry amongst this team is a lot stronger than it was a year ago, but I'm curious from you being so close and being able to talk to coach Smith, what are some of the biggest differences, you know, since I've known you, you've called a couple of the team's games this year and in coach Smith's first year. Well, I think it's just the process more than anything else. This is Craig Smith's second year. Um, a lot of these guys now have been together for for two years. I think they had a chance to have a lot better record and more success last year. But remember, they've got hit really bad with the injury bug and mm -hmm. sickness. And um, it, it really kind of uh, took away from they probably would have won four or five more games last year. I, I, I think this group uh, has a very high buy in to what Coach Smith is doing. Uh, Coach Smith has obviously has proven himself with his time at, at Utah State, at South Dakota. Uh, he's been successful wherever he's been. I like his uh, freshmen that have come in. He, he has brought in a, a nice combination of, of transfers and portal uh, guys, which they have now become known as portal guys as they, uh, with the transfer portal. And then three really good looking freshmen that are getting some time. So. I, I, I think it's just, again, the process. It's just the second year. I think, I think the team is together. They've remained fairly healthy. And uh, I think they're just going to, they're on a kind of upward uh, path right now. And I, I think they're just going to continue to get better. You've known Coach Smith a little bit, I think, from his time at Utah State, To What what do you think about him as a coach, and are you surprised by the success and how quickly he's kind of gotten this team back on track after a lackluster last year, as you mentioned? Well, I actually met Coach Smith when he when I was doing a lot of TV games in the Mountain West Conference, and he was over at Colorado State as an assistant coach. Then he went with the, the Colorado State then who, who – left for Nebraska, and then he got his first head coaching job. So I've actually known him for quite some time before he became a head coach. Number one, he, he's just a, a, a delightful person to be around. It, uh, I've said this on a broadcast early in the year that when I talk to him and we talk about, we always start out talking about the game and we always kind of evolve into talking about everything. But I always go away thinking, wouldn't he be a great guy to play for? I, I, if I was a, uh, you know, 18 to 20 year old kid and looking for a place to play, I, I think along with the great facilities at Utah and a great league, I, I just think he would be a really, really good guy to play for. He's, he's uh, uh, an outstanding instructor. He's, uh, uh, but I think more than that, he's a great communicator and, and which is not to say he, he can't be a, stern taskmaster at times, but I, I see him talking to kids. I see him communicating with kids. 
And I, I, I knew even after last year, it was just going to be a matter of time before he started having some success at Utah. Yeah, and it's been a really successful start to the season overall. We talked about the start, 14-7 and seven on the year. Already more wins than they had last year. Actually, at this time, they hadn't won a game in January, so it shows you the strong turnaround they were able to have. And uh, when was your kind of first hint that this team would be different? Did you kind of get it? You saw the Westminster game, but you also called the team's game against Cal's Bakersfield. Did you feel like this was a team that at this moment would be amongst the top five in the Pac-12 standings? Well, I, I, I thought they had a chance. Uh I think they've won some close games that have given them uh, some uh, confidence and has led to a little bit more success. I think they're, at that time, the upset win against Arizona and how they did it, boy, just just helped their confidence and, and their buy-in, so to speak, by leaps and bounds. And they, they, you know, they had a couple bumps along the way. They lost to Sam Houston State. I, you know, everyone was kind of scratching their head. Here we go again. And, but, you know, that was an awful good Sam Houston State team full of uh, transfer portal kids who had beaten Oklahoma. And um, I, I thought they're, they're in that loss, their uh, Sam Houston's quickness and athleticism really got the Utes back on their heels. It was something they hadn't seen for a while. So, I, I, again, I, they've, they've had to overcome some, some uh, losses and some hardships, but – I, I think they've grown a little uh, in each game. And then the Arizona win, like I say, I, I thought was mm -hmm. a great springboard into uh, into their their recent success in the Pac-12. Yeah, it really felt like the first signature win of the Craig Smith era, the one we'll look back on and remember. It was fortunate it kind of got overshadowed because the next day Utah went back to back as football Pac-12 champions. So it was a horrible yeah. timing for the win to happen. But, you know, I was up most yeah. recently at the games against Washington, Washington State this past week. And it's great to see kind of a crowd getting back up to the Huntsman. The game day atmosphere has been a lot of fun. You touched on this a little bit earlier about, you know, the changes to college basketball, right? Like how Coach Smith has done a good job getting guys in the portal and also developing too. Do you think it's – how challenging – I'll just say this. How challenging is it, do you think, to kind of get a group of guys who, when they do come in on a short time, to come together and buy in in the changing world of college basketball? Because it, it is so different now with the way the transfer portal works. Well, I think it is very challenging to be a college coach now with uh, the transfer portal, the UIL and – or NIL, I mean. And, and it, it is uh, – it's just a different, different time. And I think the everyday fan – is aware of those things, but doesn't really understand the, mm -hmm. the impact uh, that those things have. And I, I think you have to kind of tweak your coaching personality a, a little bit to align yourself with the, the atmosphere in, in today's college athletics. Uh, I, I think you can't go too far uh, in one direction. Uh, I've seen uh, some coaches and programs try to just – sell out to the transfer mm -hmm. portal and uh, i think that's tough I, I i i like what coach smith has done i've mentioned his three really good looking freshmen that he has mm -hmm. brought into the program and then the transfer portal you got to kind of balance that i think and and have a mix of young guys that you can develop and then some guys you come in that uh that are older and more experienced and um and I think Coach Smith has done a nice job of that. And then a couple, uh, a couple holdovers from the Larry Kraskoviak uh, time here, and he's kind of molded all of that. And I think he had the advantage this year of having a very favorable schedule. He he had, I think, seven teams that they brought in that, uh, to be honest, you're they're supposed to beat up on yes. and <laughs> and work through things. Now Sam Houston kind of threw a curve at him a little bit, but. Um, I, I think I think that schedule helped him a little bit, and I thought they, they kind of grew even through that loss to Sam Houston. They grew through that, and uh, I think in, uh, it is a different uh, uh, a different time in college athletics, and you have to adjust to that as a coach. And uh, I'm I'm sure thankful that I'm am a broadcaster, not a coach these days, <laughs> JT. <laughs> It has changed a lot, but I mean, hey, you accomplished a lot when you were a coach. And you mentioned, too, developing players and what it takes in today's world, the mix of them, too. We're going to talk about a couple of the key players for this Utah men's basketball team in a moment. But first, I want to talk to you guys about our friends at 
FanDuel Sportsbook. Guys, Locked On has entered a new deal with FanDuel, and we couldn't be more excited because the NFL playoffs are here. And we're really excited about our new sports betting partner of Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America. That's right, FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. New customers join today to get started online with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place just $5 in a bet. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel has all your favorite bets from the money line to the point spread to player props. Plus, you can even combine your bets for a chance to win big payouts with the same gay parlay. So lots of fun games coming up with the AFC and NFC championship games this coming weekend. Great college basketball action too. Still NBA going on. So make sure you guys don't miss out on this offer. And once again, place your $5 bet to get $150 in free bets, win or lose at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports book partner of the NFL. Coach, you mentioned the holdovers kind of from the Larry Kristoviak era, and that feels like it's been Arguably the biggest difference from a player standpoint is one of those guys being Brandon Carlson. He's been absolutely dominant this season from the Utes. He was tearing apart Washington more recently on the season, leads this team in points, rebounds, even averaging 2.3 blocks a game along with 7.1 points, 6, 7.6 rebounds. How have you noticed his game really come along and develop? Cause I'm, he's a guy that I interviewed when he just first got back from his mission and the physical transformation, especially feels like it's been jarring from that point. And he's now really in a position to lead this team. Well, a lot of that is health. Remember last year, he had just an awful year. He had COVID. He sprained his uh, ankle really bad. He had, uh, yeah, I think he had to have uh, an appendectomy last year. I mean, that kid went through a lot and still was second team all Pac-12. I think he's playing his way into uh, very, uh, probably a, a first round draft pick in, mm. in the NBA. Uh, I think his game has really grown uh, kind of parallel with how he has grown physically. As you said, when he came back from his mission, he was just a, a, a long old drink of water, you know. And um, one thing I always say about him, he's not only seven feet, he's long seven mm -hmm. feet. He's, he's got arms on him like well ropes, you know. And, and uh, he's really worked on his skill level. Uh, I think he's become more physical because he is stronger. He runs the floor. He does a lot of things, and I, I keep talking about the buy-in. I think he's let Coach Smith coach him. I think mm -hmm. he, is, he has bought in and uh, has become a, a leader on this team and uh, has become maybe the best post guy in the Pac-12. And I, I just the other day had an NBA scout call and said, have you seen him? And I said, yeah, and I, I don't pretend to know who can or who can't play in the NBA. I uh, during my years, I've seen guys I thought were surefire guys not make it, and guys I thought had no chance to make it. That's not my business. But as I told him, he's certainly a guy that you have to go look at and make a decision for yourself. But I would not be surprised if he finishes strong this year to see him, see him get picked. I think he's definitely going to get drafted. Mm -hmm. uh, where is the question? And it wouldn't surprise me at all to see him get drafted in, in mid to late first round. Yeah, based on the way he's playing right now, I think he's definitely could work himself in that conversation. It is amazing too. Just kind of you mentioned the NBA draft, what a crapshoot it can be sometimes. You guys, you think this guy's a five star, sure thing, whatever in college yeah. looks good there. Then that jump at the NBA, just something that's hard to manage and account for. And uh, one guy who, in terms of age wise, is kind of NBA ready, but decided to come back for another year is Marco Anthony. Marco's a guy I really enjoy watching his game. I feel like he's a guy too coming over from Utah State as Raleigh Wooster too. We talked about some of those transfers. Feels like they've meant a lot for Coach Smith in terms of establishing the culture and being extensions of him on the court well i think marco anthony's only a year or so younger than i am he's been a, he's <laughs> been around so long but uh i got a chance to see him up at utah state uh he he has he's one of those guys that i call a star role player and uh, he's a terrific rebounder he's a terrific defender uh he and uh roly wooster and and Coach Smith are kind of synonymous with each other. They they have known each other so long. They've been coached by him so long. But uh, I early in the year when he was out and they they were beating some people that they were supposed to beat. Uh, I heard people say, "Boy, you know, hey, Marco Anthony may have trouble getting back in the lineup." And I never bought into that for a minute uh -huh. because physically, 
his mental toughness, he's the heart and soul of this team in my mind. Wooster's not too far behind him. Wooster's really a, a tough kid, too. And I, I think as I have watched Coach Smith's teams at Utah and when he had great success up at Utah State, his his teams were earmarked with a lot of uh, uh, toughness and, and uh, mental toughness along with the physical toughness. And that's what both Wooster and Marco Anthony bring to the table, not just – not just physical toughness, but I think they are really, really tough mentally as well. And I think we're probably neither one of those guys are going to be all Pac-12, but every successful team has to have a couple, uh, again, my terminology, star role players. And those guys are, are, both of them are star role players. Marco Anthony has just, has, is just a perfect fit for Coach Smith's philosophy and uh, on this youth team they really are and you mentioned just the perfect fit too it really feels that way coming over being those guys and now we've talked about the players that were before coach smith came over brandon carlson uh, stefanovich another guy that's done a lot of good things this season we talked about the transfers marco anthony raleigh wooster we haven't talked about the freshmen and while the short-term for future for this utah team what's going to hold this season is very exciting i think whenever you watch a guy like k bakita go out there and do what he do, does will exact as well it is really exciting because essentially Kaba, i mean he's just the kind of guy you walk into the gym and you go whoa okay who is he stands out a little bit he looks a little different yeah. so i th i think those are great additions to coach smith's team and uh Kaba went down with an injury um on saturday so still interesting to see what this year looks like for him but I know, Coach. I'm a lot. I'm really excited about what those guys are going to bring to the future of Utah basketball. Well, Co Coach Smith described them, uh, along with the other Serbian kid, uh, as as physically re uh, physically ready to play right now as freshmen, which you don't always get. We talked about Brandon Carlson a little bit ago as a freshman and coming back from his mission. You know, he physically had trouble competing. These mm -hmm. three freshmen that come in there, they're, they're, they're grown men, you know, that physically they're ready to play. And I'm sure they had to learn how hard they had to practice and a lot of things like that, as all freshmen do. But you don't have to worry about them uh, learning how to play in college and then also adding that 15 to 20 pounds that usually a lot of freshmen have to have to uh, gain. Those, those guys are grown men at this point. So I, I think that was – uh, has been an outstanding freshman class. And Coach Smith told me he, he was really excited before the season started about these three freshmen, and, and they're showing why he was excited now. They absolutely are. It's a really fun mix of all those components, and it's led to a really su successful season so far for the Utes, but they're not done. they got a lot of time left. We're going to come back in a moment and talk about what this Utah team can achieve in the short term and the long term. But first, I want to talk to you guys about our friends at UCCU. Let UCCU make your family's dream of owning a home come true by making it more affordable. Right now, UCCU is offering a low-rate 7- and 10-year arms with rate inflation protection. An adjustable rate mortgage, or ARM for short, comes with an initial low rate for seven or 10 years. After that, it adjusts to a rate that fluctuates based on the market. A big advantage of an ARM is that it comes with an initial rate that's lower than a conventional mortgage. And with this lower rate, an ARM gives you more purchase power than a traditional mortgage. In fact, you could get up to 10% more house with an adjustable rate mortgage for the same payment as a conventional loan. Plus an adjustable rate mortgage can make qualifying for a mortgage loan easier for first time home buyers. To learn more, Get an arm today or simply simply visit uccu.com and select that arm that works best for you or stop by any UCCU branch. UCCU, love where you bank. All right, Coach, coming back in. For this Utah basketball team, we mentioned it's already been – as soon as you got the Arizona win, it felt like, okay, this is already – looking like it's going to be improving over last season. Now for sure is you have more wins, just how strong this group looks overall. When you look toward the short-term future of this team of what the rest of the season holds, how do you think it's all going to play out for the Utes? Well, I, I don't think this team uh, is mature enough, and I would say that about any team, or far enough along that you can think much past the next game. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, as, uh, uh, you know, in the coaching fraternity, uh, the old saying, the most important game of the year is the next game. And I think we're, we're very close to February now, which is the most important and the toughest month of all of basketball of college basketball um, because if you're a contender you got to contend every game if you're a pretender you're just trying to get through the season so i don't think this team 
can get too far ahead of himself. Uh, and I think Coach Smith would agree that the most important game for them is the next game. And I wouldn't get uh, start looking too far down the path with them. I, I think they are, if they continue to play well, they're destined to postseason play. Now, is that going to be the NCAA? They've got a great chance. But uh, I'm always, uh, uh, and I, I made mention of this, I, I, I did a, a Mountain West Conference game Friday night where they brought on the first four in, the next four out, the next uh, you know, there's still a bunch of basketball to be played. And my my soapbox speech uh, to my teams always was, hey, every week or every weekend, you got a chance to play yourself into contention or out of contention. You can be riding along uh, pretty high on a pretty good win streak, all of a sudden lose two games in a weekend, and you're you're back to kind of sucking ditch water again then. and Or you can be uh, – not not playing real well and, and uh, you know, stage a couple great wins over the weekend. So every week and every weekend, you got a chance to play yourself in or out of contention. And I, I would kind of make a pretty healthy wager that Coach Smith is not looking much past this next game or this next two games set. So, But I think this team has a chance to, if they finish well, to get to the NCAA tournament. And I I think they're probably destined to postseason play at some level right now, but it's still we we got we got a lot of time left. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've well said, perfectly as a, as a coach would for that situation, taking it game by game. That's what you got to do. We the media like to look ahead and project long term, but you know the team has the right approach for it. And it's going to be a lot of fun to see how it all plays out come Pac-12 tournament time. Coach, before we get you out of here, got to ask you about a couple of the old days when you were with the Utes first, just what was it like coaching under Rick Majerus? Well, I learned a lot of basketball under Rick Majerus. It wasn't always a pleasant experience. You know, he was pretty good about uh, putting on a, a, a happy face and a humorous face for, for the fans. When you were around him every day, uh, it, it was sometimes a tough existence, but uh, I do owe him any success I ever had after that as a coach. A lot should be, contributed to him because I did learn an awful lot of basketball uh, from him. I also learned I couldn't be him. I, I had, to, as a head coach, I had to coach to my personality. It's a lot that way, uh, JT, I think you would say as an announcer, you can't emulate anybody else. you got to be who you are. But it was, we had a lot of success and that was fun. I had some really great guys and longtime friends, Jeff Judkins, Donnie Daniels on that staff. Tommy Connor, guys have been great, great friends and remain great friends of mine. But uh, uh, it was it, it was all basketball around Rick Majerus. My last year with him, we had a coaches meeting at 1030 Christmas morning, if that gives you any indication what it was like. Uh, but you traded that for the uh, experience and the knowledge you gained and the success we had. We had we had a lot of success there. And uh, and I'm thankful for, for that time, but it, you, you kind of paid the price too sometimes with the hours put in and, and the accountability. If you had a scout for Rick Majerus, boy, you were on edge because if you missed one minor detail, it, it was not a pleasant experience. So um, there was a, a lot of good people involved up there. Chris Hill, uh, who, who is still a great friend of mine and, and um, you know, I, I'm, I'm thankful for my time there. And then my, my daughter, both my daughters graduated from the University of Utah. And one of them was, uh, as you know, uh, an intern in the uh, athletic department there and, and was around a lot of my old friends and acquaintances. Liz, Liz Abel took great care of her. So I, I have a lot of fond memories and very thankful for my team, for my time there at University of Utah. Yeah, you mentioned too, um, just your, the length of time you were there. You were also the interim head coach. What was that experience like leading the locker room at Utah at the Huntsman? Well, again, that was a real learning experience. I, I, I tell you, I had been an assistant for many years before that happened, and your whole life gets turned upside down. I went from uh, being Rick Majerus' assistant to then one night him call and say, I'm done, you're the head coach. And, all, you know, again, that changes things quite a bit. And then just a couple of weeks after that, my wife and I had our first child. So it was kind of a topsy turvy time in our life, but I had great support. Chris Hill was behind me a hundred percent. And then again, I had Donnie Daniels, Kirk Earlywine, Jeff Judkins on that staff. 
And it, uh, I had a lot of support, you know, I was the head coach, but we did a lot of things by committee, but that, uh, raised my profile in the coaching profession quite a bit. And we had some success. It wasn't like we went to the final four or anything, but we had, uh, beat BYU two out of three times, beat them in the conference tournament, which was a, a, uh, with uh, a last second shot by Tommy Connor, by the way. And, um, so it again that was that was a pleasant experience that was hard i i um i think assistant coaches around the nation and i did thought oh shoot you know you just become a head coach that's that's a pretty easy transition it's not an easy transition all of a sudden it it, it uh becomes all consuming that's the first thing you think about in the morning and the last thing you think about at night if you can get to sleep at night so uh, that's been a long time ago, but I still have a lot of uh, uh, really happy and pleasant memories about that. But it, it it was tough, you know. It was tough on the players, too. You know, I, I go from assistant coach one day to patting them on the back to kicking them in the butt the next day. And that was a little bit of a, a, a challenging transition as well. Well, one thing that wasn't a challenge was having you on today, Coach. We really appreciate you joining us on this one. If you guys want to hear more of Coach, he's calling games on Fox. He's also the voice of the Big Sky Basketball Tournament with Tony Park, so make sure you guys tune into that on ESPN Plus when the time comes around. And may have some more Utah basketball games in your future as well, Coach. So we look forward to seeing you and really appreciate you coming on today. Well, thanks, JT. It was really fun and really an honor that uh, you asked me to be on. So thank you very much for that, and I'm sure I'll see you at uh, – some of these venues before the season's over with. Absolutely, you will. If you guys are in the market for a second listen every day, make sure you check out the Locked On College Basketball Podcast, where they have expert interviews, big names, big coaches, insiders, players. It's all available on Locked On College Basketball, your one-stop shop for everything college basketball on the Locked On Podcast Network, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. Big thanks again to Coach Cravens for joining us. That's going to do it for today's edition of Locked On Youth, but we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>